Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Steve Cangelosi. I'm the voice of the New York Red Bulls on the Madison Square Garden Network. Welcome here on behalf of everyone at MSG. I know uh, we are tremendously excited to kick off the 2015 MLS season and Red Bull soccer on MSG in just a couple of weeks and continue our relationship with the Red Bulls franchise and before that the Metro Stars, of course, that's approaching uh, two-decade uh, affiliation between the team and the network, and we're very proud of that. Uh, today, of course, though, is about the acquisition of a terrific player. And a great day for the Red Bulls organization and what they hope is the beginning of good things on the field, beginning with the opening game March 8th against Sporting Kansas City. This deal for Sasha Klushchin, of course, was finalized back on January 28th. The team waited to today to make the announcement formally and have Sasha available to all the media here because of the training camp in Florida. But all of your questions to be answered today by the gentlemen who are at the podium. Uh, this is the first major player acquisition by the New York Red Bulls in the calendar year 2015. The operative word for 2015, I know for the group here, is team. And with that said, it's a great start because the team of Ali Curtis and Jesse Marsh made this day happen and the arrival of a player like Sasha Kleschen. Ali made the trade with Montreal, of course, to put the Red Bulls at the top of the allocation order, which put New York in control to sign the U.S. national team member who was playing abroad. Red Bulls opened the season Sunday, March 8th, against Sporting Kansas City. March 22nd is the home opener against D.C. United, 5 o'clock. So before we go any further with the formal program, let's just give a warm welcome, please, to the former Seton Hall star, Sasha Kleschen, who's back home in New Jersey. Welcome. first speaker was named the Red Bull sporting director back on December 23rd. Seven seasons in Major League Soccer prior to that, most recently senior director of player relations and competition, negotiating hundreds of players' contracts in that time, and he supervised the MLS homegrown player program as well. Sorry, Jesse, I will say he was a Herman Trophy winner back in 1999 at Duke. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the sporting director, Ali Curtis. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank everyone for being here. Uh, thank Sasha. Thank his agent, Richard Motzkin. Uh, today's a great day. Uh, it's a great day for the club. It's a great day uh, for everyone in the New York uh, metropolitan area and for Major League Soccer. Um, we're elated that Sasha's here with us, um, that he's going to be wearing a Red Bull jersey uh, for the 2015 season and beyond, and just super excited. Um, Sasha's a great guy. Uh, as well as a great player, and we need to add players like that uh, now and moving forward. Um, the deal to bring Sasha here wasn't the easiest. Uh, it was complicated. Uh, there was a lot of moving parts. Uh, we had to deal with Anderlecht. We had to deal with Montreal in order to acquire the trade. Uh, we had to work with Major League Soccer in order to uh, acquire the player via the allocation ranking. And then we had to deal with Richard and Sasha in terms of really trying to uh, bring the contract to a head where we could sign him. So, uh, we're happy. We have our man. Um, we have a great leader and a great player. Um, one of the many things that uh, attracted us to Sasha was, one, he was a top target in terms of where he fits on the field uh, and how he's in his playing style. But most importantly, um, and Jesse will go more in depth on this, is Sasha's a great guy and he's a great character guy. And all along we've been talking about we want to bring players in that fit who we are and who we aspire to be. Um, and Sasha fits that mold. So we're, we're very, very happy. Um, this is a great day for this club. Uh, it's a great day for Major League Soccer, and uh, we're elated that Sasha's here with us. Thank you. A lot of you know the coach's background already. It's a room filled with soccer reporters. I'll go over the bullet points anyway. Jesse Marsh, of course, was introduced as Red Bulls head coach on January 7th. He was head coach in Montreal, and in 2012, with the impact, 12 wins that season was tied for the most by an expansion club since 1998. U.S. men's national team assistant he was under Bob Bradley at the 2010 FIFA World Cup as the team advanced, of course, to the knockout round. As a player, a three-time MLS Cup champion, and he has a connection to New Jersey as well, a two-time captain at Princeton. Please welcome Jesse Marsh. 
Good. Uh, thanks for everyone being here. Uh, you know, I first heard the name Sasha Klustian, uh when he was playing for the U-20s and the Chicago Fire team was down in Bradenton, Florida. And we played against Sasha, and, and I'm not sure if you even remember this game, but he wound up scoring a goal against us. And, and I even asked their staff after the game, who's, who's that wiry guy playing in the middle of the field? He's not bad. And they said, that's Sasha Klustian. And I said, yeah, okay, I'm going to keep track of him. So, you know, years go by. Then uh, Bob Bradley drafts him at Chivas USA. And it was kind of a first year for all of us to go there. Sasha was a, a, a big draft pick that year. And, and Bob had said to me at the beginning of that season that Sasha's going to be a project for you. I want you to help now uh, in the maturation process of, of him and, and, and integrating him into what we do as a team. Some of it's been documented about our relationship there, but I will say this. He pushed himself every day to try and be as good as he could possibly be, and he quickly moved himself up the ladder to be a big-time player for that club, maybe one of the biggest ever to play for that club. Uh, I couldn't have been prouder than in 2010 when, when he made the move to Anderlecht, and you know it also coincided with a tough time in, in his life and, a, and, and tough time in, our, in, in my coaching career because it was also the same time that I was part of the staff that made the decision to not bring Sasha to the World Cup. Uh, that's the toughest moment I've ever had as a coach, um, you know, and I think we went through it together. Uh, but I know that when he went to Anderlecht, he took that with him and he had even a stronger desire to prove himself and to prove uh, what he's about. And, you know, if you look at his five-year time in Anderlecht, in Belgium, and the championships he won, uh, the success he had, the Champions League games he played in, those are all great. But I, I was there firsthand two years ago when he won the championship, when he won the trophy and he won that league. And the way that the fans treated him, the way that the organization treated him, the way that everybody appreciated everything that he was about, I think spoke volumes for an American to go to a big club like that and now be welcomed, be treated like a hero. All right? And we saw that again 10 days ago when they said goodbye to Sasha. And as much as he is a good player and he's going to add to so much of what we are on the field, he is going to bring all of his qualities as a man to what we're doing here now. And I think that's, that's what I'm most excited about is already he's made such an impact on our players off the field by showing how humble he is, how hard he works, how much he cares about the group. And we're trying to shift this team and this club to being now more about each other and the commitment to what it takes every day to create a winner. And Sasha, for me, embodies that in so many ways. So you're not just getting a good player who's been successful in his career. You're getting a mature guy who's a leader, who's driven, who understands what it takes to be successful, and who cares about people. So uh, I couldn't be happier that you're here, Sasha. Uh, uh, I'm proud that you're part of this team, and, and I'm counting on you, buddy. So thanks. I know Ali did it briefly. I did want to formally acknowledge Richard Motzkin. He's the executive vice president and managing executive of global soccer at Wasserman. Where are you, Richard? I'm sorry. There we go. And thank you for being here as well on behalf of Sasha. Uh, 46 caps for the United States men's national team and the only American playing in Champions League last year with Anderlecht in Belgium. That is Sasha Klustian, uh, the regular under Bob Bradley on the U.S. men's national team. Jesse told you about the omission from the World Cup roster. He was not omitted from the 2009 Confederations Cup, and that was the United States' best finish in that tournament ever as it went to the final against Brazil, and he was part of that. He's no stranger to Major League Soccer, Sasha. He began his career with Chivas back in 2006. Seven assists in that rookie year, and he was the runner-up for the MLS Rookie of the Year Award. By 2008, Sasha Klustian was MLS Best 11, and I know he's got that on the radar for 2015. Please welcome to New York, Sasha Klustian. First and foremost, I just want to say that I'm very excited to be here. I I consider this to be a big challenge in my sporting career, and I, I really look forward to, to being on the field. Anybody that knows me knows uh, I love nothing more than, than being at training and, and then playing in the games on the weekend. So 
to be down in Florida for the first week was great. I uh, was excited to meet my new teammates and, and, and get thrown right into the action. And obviously, I can't wait for the season to start. Uh, I want to say thank you to Jesse and Ali for putting so much effort to bring me here. They, they made me feel like I was a top target and put a lot of confidence in me. So I want to repay the organization by, by hopefully bringing the first MLS Cup to Red Bull and also to, to lead the team on and off the field and, and, and make a team that the fans are proud of. Uh, and I also want to say thanks to Rich Motzkin for doing a lot of the dirty work behind the scenes that, that got me here. And uh, I'm excited and I'm proud to be here, but I think the work is just starting. Thank you. Sasha, thank you. We want to hear from you, uh, your questions, and uh, all three are available here at the podium. We would ask you to wait to ask your question uh, because a Red Bull staffer is going to pass the mic around. So if we could start, Christian, you've got your hand up if you'd like to get it started. And guys, you could just use the microphones that are at the side of your chairs. I think they do uh, detach there for you. And that way the fans will have access. Uh, Christian is the gentleman in the blue sweater. You could start with him. Go ahead. Sasha, could you just give us a little insight, 29 years old, playing for a top European team, the decision now to come to MLS in your prime, what led you to the decision and would this have been a possibility a few years ago when you were in the league? Is it a testament to the growth of the league? I, I think the league has grown tremendously. I was speaking with Richard last night about how when I was drafted there were only 12 teams in the league my first season. Uh, it's crazy to see all the, the stadiums that have been built. And then just being back in training for one week, the level of the play I can tell on our team especially is a lot higher than when I left the league. Um, I could have stayed at Anderlecht for my entire career. I had no problem. The, the, the president and general manager there told me I could stay there for my entire career if I wanted to. But the challenge arose to, to try to come to, to New York, to the Red Bull organization and try to be a leader. Uh, a team that's never won MLS Cup is a huge challenge. So we want to make something that the fans are proud of. And the, the sporting challenge for me was the biggest draw. Go ahead, sir. He's going to pass the mic to you. Gentleman in the third. No, right, be, right behind him. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. To follow up on that, um, with Jurgen having made comments at least a year ago about Clint and uh, Michael Bradley. How did that affect your decision, knowing that he has preferred players to stay, or at least expressed an opinion of a player preferring to stay in Europe? And you were at one of the big clubs. You were in Champions League. You would seem to be that's one of the, you're one of the people that he was aiming those comments at, if not by name, certainly by implication. Well, I, I guess I can't live my life and play, you know, play football just just to be worrying about what the national team I I is going through and what he's thinking. For me, like I said, the challenge was to come to Red Bull Arena and try to lead this team and be a leader. And I think, I, I think when I show, I hope to prove that I'm one of the best midfielders in MLS, that I'll find my way back on the national team that way. So uh, Jesse knows how motivated I am. Um, he saw what I went through in 2010, not making the World Cup team. Um, obviously, in 2014, it was pretty much the same thing. I still have hopes of playing in the 2018 World Cup. I still feel like I'm going to push my way back onto the national team by my play and my leadership with the Red Bulls. So I'm extremely motivated, and I still don't think I've played my last game in a national team jersey. Can you talk a little bit about how you used Sasha in Florida in the midfield and your plans to how you're going to use him this year? Yeah, you know, in the, in the process of getting him here, we, we spoke about some of the elements of what we have now on the team, how he's played, what kind of player he is, how he's played at Anderlecht, and then how I think he fits in here. At Anderlecht, he played more of a holding midfielder and was very tactical, and I think it's been a good thing for his career because his soccer IQ, I think, has gone way up, and his ability to pick up on many things going on in the field at once is at a high level. But I still think that in this league, he's an attacking player. And he's still, even when he played in Anderlecht, when he's around the goal, he's, he's clever and he's sharp and he knows how to put attacking plays together. So, you know, within our team, we've already tried to figure out different ways that we can use him further up the field so that all of his smart play and good ideas lead to chances and goals. 
it paid off already in, in one of our preseason games where he just sniffed out a play and was able to bury it. So I, I think that you'll see him in a much more attacking role on this team. Sasha, welcome. Uh, two part uh, to this question. Um, I'm curious what the conversation has been like with management about you being the face of the franchise and what, you know, what your thoughts are about that in general. And more specifically, having lived in this area, how you think the Red Bulls and you as the face of the Red Bulls go about breaking through uh, you know, in terms of the mainstream media overall? Haven't had any extended conversations about being the face of the franchise. Um, Look, uh, I'm a guy who likes to lead by example. And so I think just by leading by example, by the way I train every day, the way I work every day, the way I go about things, I hope that's an example for the young players. That's most important first and foremost. Uh, as far as the media in New York and New Jersey, obviously it's the biggest market in the States and that's a motivation for me and a big challenge for me. The biggest challenge is that we haven't won MLS Cup yet and this is gonna be our 20th season and we're really gonna go for it and that's a huge challenge for me that I want to cement myself in the history of Red Bulls the you know that we brought the first championship here so that's my big motivation and I, I'll add to that and you know I, I, I get the face of the organization comment because that's what's been like a lot in the past the face of this or, this team is gonna be the team and, I, and that's one of the reasons why Sasha is such a great fit because he gets that and he's motivated not by personal success, but by team success. Jesse, thank you. Uh, next, anyone? Go ahead, follow up. Actually, this is for, for Ali. Um, just, you've talked a lot about applying analytics to your process, and I'm just curious, just where the rubber hits the road, how you go about doing that, you know, with Sasha overseas, you know, how you went about scouting in that way, and uh, just specific ways in which you were able to integrate it. Thanks. So. Uh, you know, with Sasha, it was a relatively uh, smoother process. You know, we didn't have a whole lot of time uh, to make a decision on player, We, you know, over the last 40 days or so. Sasha's a known player, particularly in the American sports landscape. So we knew um, what Sasha was like from an on-field perspective. Uh, from an off-field perspective, uh, Jesse had, had a great relationship and had prior history, so we were able to get some of those insights uh, about players and their leadership qualities and their off-the-field qualities um, that typically take a long time, we were able to uh, shorten that process and, and able to capitalize. So uh, we saw an opportunity where we might be able to get uh, you know, a high profile player as well as a high character player. Uh, we needed to move very quickly with a lot of strength and uh, we worked with the league office and we worked with Montreal uh, to get something done. So um, it's a great day, we're, we're, we're happy it worked out. So what we're, you know, what we're focused on is bringing in high character guys um, that can perform on the field. So in, in that standpoint, we knew Sasha was a high character guy. He was going to add a tremendous amount of value to our organization. Um, you know, Jesse mentioned early, earlier, uh, our philosophy is that success is achieved as a team. And so everything we do, it needs to be driven in the direction that this is our team, this is our philosophy, and we win together. So, and, and Sasha, he fits that. Question. Ali, <coughs> just to build on your, you just said character issues, and I've heard Jesse mention it a couple of times. Was that something when the two of you looked at the current roster, saw maybe some deficiencies, some, I don't want to say lack of character, but that was an area perhaps that was lacking on the current roster that you wanted to address, and how did that manifest itself? You know, that's a good question. You know, I think you always want to try to strengthen the club uh, from a character standpoint. Um, you know, it's really a, an opportunity. You know, we had some players that left the team that uh, were leaders, uh, and there's going to be some opportunities. We knew there were going to be some opportunities where players would have the opportunity to step up uh, and take a, a broader leadership, uh, 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 broader leadership role. Uh, Sasha fits that mold. Um, you know, he's got a tremendous amount of experience at the national team level, internationally, as well as already in MLS. And a lot of the guys already knew Sasha. They're familiar with him. Um, so in terms of that chemistry component, in terms of that philosophy and character component, um, Sasha was, is a great fit. Um, so we're, we're super excited um, that he's here. Um, we, 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 we're proud that he's here, uh, and we believe the fans will be proud uh, uh, that he's wearing a Red Bull jersey. 
you know, I'll try to put it plainly. For four years, Thierry Henry defined a lot of this organization and defined the team and how the team operated. And that, that was a good thing in a lot of ways. But now that he's left and he's a huge personality and a huge presence and a huge talent, now there's got to be a new phase of how this thing moves forward. So I think the emphasis is now that you know, it's a little bit more on the group and the unit and the mentality of what it takes to be successful every day. And then having current guys within the team raise their status of leadership and presence within the team, along with introducing new players that can, can also contribute to that and benefit from that. So it's, a, it's, 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 not, it's not better or worse, you know? And, and hopefully it leads us down the road to being more successful and winning an MLS Cup like Sasha has talked about here. But this is now how, this is where, if you want to talk about philosophy, this is a shift that's being, being made within the organization. And, and I think it, it fits with who Mark de Grand Prix is. It fits with who Ollie Curtis is. It fits with who I am. It fits who, who Sasha question is. Uh, this is addressed, I guess, largely to, to Ollie, but also to Jesse. Uh, on more than one occasion, we've heard uh, about the emphasis largely on statistics and advanced uh, advanced statistics that you're going to be looking forward to using. I'm just curious, I mean, what sort of statistics is it and numbers and analysis specifically that you guys would pay added attention to? I mean, are we talking things like uh, charting bad first touches versus good first touches? Uh, you know, head balls one, 50 balls one. What sort of statistics that you guys can look at that you think advanced analysis will help you in the long run? Yeah. Um. In general, you know, it's important that when we make this, well, I'll try to, hand, I'll try to answer that question in two parts. So first and foremost, um, you know, we've incorporated a decision-making process that um, where we sit at a round table and we get the information and op opinions and perspectives of all the guys within our, within our club. Uh, that's from a player perspective and that's also from a staffing perspective. So that's number one in terms of incorporating those, those data points. Number two, from an analytical standpoint, we're reaching out to all of our global partners uh, and leveraging the different uh, performance uh, tools that they have to help us create what we want to achieve uh, from a Red Bull perspective. So we're looking at, we're looking at uh, video, we're tagging plays, we're looking at um, the distance uh, a player uh, ran, the speed at which he ran, all those different uh, metrics that you're able to find within a game or within a training session, we're creating that as it pertains to what we're trying to achieve at Red Bull. Ultimately, we want to drive performance. And fortunately, we've got a lot of different tools in a lot of different areas that are part of the Red Bull family that we can draw from. And so we're in that process right now where we're drawing from all of our different uh, uh, all of our different partners and tor so that we can drive performance for New York. Can I also go? So a lot's been made out of this data analytics, okay, and it's sort of a, a token phrase that people have grabbed hold of. But in the end, we're just trying to add modern technology to what we think is important within the game. And, and there's still nothing that can replace now what it's like to work on the field, what the eye is about the game, doing your work uh, to make sure that in all ways the team understands what what their roles are on the field. So it's just it's it's an additional tool that we're we're making sure that we use to make sure that in all ways there's identification for who we are, what we want to try to achieve, what we're looking for in players, so that we're able to sort of from a big perspective understand and help the players understand what we want to achieve. Just to follow up on, on that to both Ali and Jesse, does it have to be an evolution also in terms of what you incorporate and how, um, just because it hasn't been done to quite this extent, let's say, at the MLS level, and do you feel that this is perhaps many other teams that have incorporated analytics, it's been a multi-year process. Is that likely to be the case with, with you guys as well? Yeah, so it's going to take time, you know. Um, it, it really moves in phases. So you, you look at a number of different data points. Um, you look at kind of the identi identity of who you are as a club and your personnel, and you start to pull different data points and to see if that drives performance and what you're trying to achieve. So, you know, we'll be in a, a more advanced place 12 months from now. We'll be in an even greater advanced place uh, two and three years from now, but it really will progress over time. And if you look at the broader sports industry, you know, this sports sciences and, and the area of performance analytics, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, 
it's not the end, it's really the beginning in terms of, you know, clubs and teams and all different sports are really just stri striving to progress in this area because it's important and it really will help drive performance. Ultimately, at the end of the day, we want to do things and we want to use tools such that we can drive performance for our club and really provide, provide information to our players such that they can perform at a high level. But again, the short answer is your question is, yes, we're developing it and it will, and it, it will improve each and every year. Yes, I, I, I believe the ceiling for analytics is as high as in soccer as any other sport. It's going to take time. It's a little bit, you know, as you know, soccer is a little bit more fluid than some of the other static sports. Um, and it will take time. It's difficult. I think when you look at soccer, a lot of the European teams are even coming over to the United States and meeting with not just some of the MLS clubs, but they're also meeting with uh, clubs and teams and other sports industries to understand, you know, how they're using data analytics, what they're, how, you know, what aspects of data analytics that you're, that they're using. And that's what we're trying to do. Christian. Sasha, what are your thoughts on analytics? No, I'm just joking. Um, I, this question's for you. You were, you were a little <laughs> tired uh, looking up there, so I wanted to wake you up. Uh, I, I wanted to ask you about the recruitment process. When Ali and Jesse come to you uh, with the idea, what did they sell you on? What was the recruitment? And, and also for Ali, too, when you identify uh, this player, you see it's a possibility. Um, what, what goes through the process? What's the sales pitch you bring to him? Uh, and, and what's the process you go through, Sasha, talking it over with your family, knowing the decision is right for you? You mind if I just, let me jump in really quickly and I'll, and I'll let Sasha take it, take it away. So Sasha's a guy that he comes through the centralized process of the allocation rankings. So literally day one, you try to identify, we knew we only had approximately, probably, you know, two to three weeks to really capitalize. Um, uh, maybe two to four weeks because we knew other clubs in MLS were interested in a player like Sasha. Not too many players historically year on year actually go through the allocation process. So uh, very quickly we were able to identify um, you know, Sasha as a top target that could come through the allocation process. Then we knew what our rank was in, in the allocation process relative to our ability to, to sign Sasha. So we knew we had to get to Montreal, right? So. We contacted Montreal. It was a, you know, it was a back and forth, right? Uh, we worked with the league office as well, um, and really it culminated over the Super Draft. So uh, the day before the draft, we had multiple conversations with Montreal. We finally reached agreement uh, on the day of the draft, um, and we were able to put pen to paper in terms of the trade, um, uh, handed it over to the league office, and then really the process began um, with Anderlecht in terms of what it would take to actually bring Sasha over. Once you're able to reach agreement with Anderlecht, the club, then we're able to engage in discussions with Sasha and his, and his, and his agent, Richard Monskin. And in that sense, you know, it's complicated. You're trying to, you know, value all these different measurables. Uh, there was a time component to our trade as well, which we had to extend a number of different times uh, with Montreal, and they were amenable to that. Um, so it was one of those, you know, there's been a lot of things that have been happening over the last 40 days, you know, and um, it's been uh, every day has been uh, a lot of hard work um, by a lot of good people within this club. And uh, we're really proud that we were able to bring a player of Sasha's caliber, again, character as well as play. So I'll leave that to, in terms, I, I, I hijacked, sorry, that question, I, but I just wanted to give you at least from a timeline perspective because there was a lot of things that kind of occurred before we were even given the ability to to not only sign Sasha, but also just speak to him and his representative. And before Sasha talks, I want to hijack the question further. When did you identify that you did need a player like Sasha? Uh, well, we knew it was, we, well, in terms of when a player's under contract with another club, um, while he's not available to sign, you've got to reach agreement with, with Anderlecht. And so we reached agreement with Anderlecht probably you know, right around, I want to say around mid-January or so. Um, so once we were able to reach agreement with Anderlecht, we were able to kind of reach out to Sasha, and we were able to kind of conclude the deal. All right, Sasha, don't let anybody else interrupt you. Go. Okay. So the recruitment process for me, I think, was fairly easy because Jesse knows me as a player and a person. Um, 
he knows how I feel about the sporting part of things, the challenge, the the organization that wants to win, that has a nice training center, that has a beautiful stadium, that is challenging and wants to win MLS Cup every season. So you can't, you, you can only throw in a handful of teams in MLS that check off all those boxes and a great place to live. And Red Bulls ticks all those boxes off. So I think when Jesse got the job, he knew that it would be a place I would be interested in. And, and it was the case. Obviously, there's a lot of things that go into it. I had a daughter 10 months ago. Um, you know, we're from California, so it's nice to be back in the States, closer to home. There's so many things that go into a decision like this. And there's a lot of times where my wife and I sat down and went back and forth and back and forth and pros and cons and things like that. But the most important for me was the challenge on the field and the, the challenge to lead the team, the challenge to try to win, to try to lead this organization to wins, to, to have a winning mentality. And obviously they've built the stadium, they've built the training center. And, and I think everybody that works for the club is, is as motivated as I am to win. So it seemed like it fit hand in hand in the end. If there's another question, we'll take it. But Sasha, how do you think the league has changed since you last played in MLS? You're surrounded by talk of analytics and so much more, it seems, than before you left for Europe. Yeah, like I said earlier, the level on the field has gotten better. The, uh, the stadiums have gotten nicer. The fans and the supporters have, have come more in numbers. The TV's better. Everything has gotten so much better. There were 12 teams in the league when I started. It's crazy to think back on a league in America that had 12 teams. You can't even imagine wh where the league is now compared to nine years ago. So most important for me is the level has risen on the field. And that's that's huge because, uh, you know, we want to continue to challenge ourselves and we want to continue to create fans. And by doing by having the level on the field as high as possible, that that only helps. So it, it's been great. Is there uh, another question out? This is uh, more for Ali than for Je than either for Jesse or Sasha. But I'm curious on the back end of this deal. Um, obviously, you paid attention to what's gone on in Montreal since. Uh, does Ayango's situation over there have any impact whatsoever on the way things? Uh, I guess the way the trade moves forward. In other words, if he never plays for them, is there any sort of allocation compensation owed back to them or any such thing if he is in breach and never plays for them? You know, honestly, that, that would be a question for the league office in terms of, you know, the, the trade was approved by the league. Um, you know, everything that was done was consistent with every other trade that's ever happened in, in the league office. So um, in terms of whether or not he plays for Montreal, that's uh, a question between Montreal and, and, the, and the league office. Can I just say something also? Uh, I failed to mention earlier how I think it was a difficult process for Ali and Jesse to give up two good players in order for me to get here. But that showed me a lot of confidence also in part of the recruitment process that, you know, eventually seeing what they gave up to have me here shows how, bad they, how badly they wanted me here. And so that was an important part of it also. Uh, just for Sacha, what does it mean to be back here where you played uh, collegiately and just thinking back on your time at Seton Hall, what stands out the most to you? Well, my time at Seton Hall was some of the best moments of my life. Um, made a ton of great friends. You know, Manny Shellshite has always been a, a huge mentor to me, so it's nice to, to be able to see him around more. Um, I know the area well. I know it's a great place to live. My wife and I are excited to live here again. She, she's never lived here, but she's excited. I, I've told her great things. And obviously, I still have a lot of friends around from, from my Seton Hall days. And I have an uncle who lives in New Jersey. So for family-wise and off the field, it's great. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, it, New York City is also my favorite city in the world. So twice a year for the last five years, my wife and I would come on vacation here. So we know the area well, and we're excited about being here. Just to follow up on my question earlier and some of the other questions about recruitment, do the guys like Mix Discarouge and several of the, the national team players coming back uh, make your decision any easier? Did it influence it in any way? I don't think it influenced me at all. I think for me personally, I had to do what was best for me and my family. And I felt like at this moment, 
the move to Red Bull especially was was a, was the thing that I wanted. I wanted to be here, and they wanted to have me. I don't think anybody else's move determined anything for me. Time for two more, if there are. Anyone? Okay, there's going to be a photo op right outside uh, this room and television interviews uh, available there as well. Ali Curtis, Jesse Marsh, and of course, Sasha Question. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. All right. Awesome. All right. Over here. All right. Good job. 